Our first company will bring us into the world of healthcare technology and specifically fertility. Did you know that one in 10 women in the US will have trouble conceiving? But with this next company, they've had some massive success with a product that may be able to help. Please help me welcome to the stage Leah Von Bitter. She's the CEO and co-founder of Ava Science. And please help me give her a warm welcome to the Collision Growth Stage. Leah. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here this afternoon. We'll be talking about making babies, so I think you've chosen the right place to be at. Um, and I also want to correct what was just said. Um, it is one in 10, but it's not one in 10 women that have trouble having a baby. It's one in 10 men and women having trouble having a baby. So I just wanted to make sure that we all come into this with the right um, understanding. Well. Yeah, my name is Leah. I'm one of the co-founders of Ava. Um, we are one of the leading digital women's health companies. And actually, before I tell you a little bit more about what we do, I would love to spend a moment in telling you why we're doing it. We believe that women's health research has been letting women down. Across all the different life stages of a woman, be trying to conceive, be contraception, be pregnancy, be menopause, women have been and are relying on inadequate and often antiquated solutions. That is, if there's any solutions at all. We have made it our mission to advance women's health through technology and through clinical research. We strongly believe that with the advancements of technology, especially within digital health, we have been given the tools to really make a difference here, and we intend to make that difference. Our overall goal is to be a data-driven, um, a data-driven, uh, sorry, companion for women across all different stages of their reproductive life, and using AI to provide services to women across that entire spectrum. Now, I told you where we want to go with this company, but I also want to tell you how we are already making a difference right now in couples' lives. And it's really hard to explain our product if you don't understand the basics of basically sex ed. So let's go to that. Um, if I asked you here to rate how much you know about fertility and menstrual cycles, one being you don't know anything about it, 10 no being you are the expert, who of you would rate yourself at a one or like a two or more? Hands up. Okay, we have a couple of people. Keep your hands up, keep your hands up. Okay, who would rate yourself at a five plus? Okay, seven, anyone seven? All right, so the people that have their hands up, you're very welcome to join me on stage later on. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you so much for being here. So for everyone else, I think it's important that I give you a bit of a background of what, you know, why we're doing what we're doing. So sex ed, beginning lesson. Why do women track their menstrual cycles when they're trying to get pregnant? The fact is, in an entire menstrual cycle, and as a you know, reminder, that's usually around 28, 30 days, but highly varied, there's only six days you can actually get pregnant during a menstrual cycle. Um, however, 70% of pregnancies actually occur within a three-day window. So it's really important to know when those three days are in order to improve your chances of getting pregnant. However, almost 50% of women have cycles that vary more than seven days, which means that it's really hard to find out when that window is, and it shifts from month to month, right? We know that scientific studies, actually Wilcox had showed us that if you time your intercourse, your chance of getting pregnant will actually double per cycle. So it's really important to do that. However, it's really hard to find out when your fertile window is. Little side note, a lot of like animals, for example, show signs of ovulation and fertile window. We do not. Um, and so, well, we do, I'll get to that, but we don't show it very obviously. So it's important for us to find a way to do that easily. And our answer to that is basically, at this point, the Ava bracelet, which is what I'm wearing here. The Ava bracelet is a completely new and precise method for women to track their fertile window in real time. It tracks different physiological signals, such as skin temperature, respiratory rate, heart rate, and others, continuously throughout the night. So you would actually only wear this during the night and not in the day. Um, and why that's the most visible part of our technology, 
our technology actually goes much further. So we have the bracelet, which you wear. And all of that data is then fed into our backend where our algorithms do their magic, which basically is taking all of those parameters and then giving you an actionable insight over where you are in your cycle and about your fertility. All of that is then back communicated to our user over the app um, and together with a lot of also educational resources and other support resources. So I promised you a little bit of sex ed. It wouldn't be complete without a chart of the menstrual cycle. So for the people that rated themselves five or more, you might know this really well. So what are we looking at here? What we're looking at is a typical menstrual cycle chart. Starts at the beginning. Uh, here is beginning of cycle, end of the cycle. And what you see shaded in pink and green is the fertile window. Those are the six days that I mentioned before. The green ones are the three days that I mentioned before that you have a 70% chance of getting pregnant. Now, you, what you also see is you see all of those hormonal changes throughout the menstrual cycle and how they're, all, how they're all moving throughout the menstrual cycle. And what I want you to understand here is by measuring all of those physiological signals that I mentioned before, we can detect the fertile window at the very beginning where the pink line basically opens. So we could show that we can detect 5.3 fertile days with almost a 90% accuracy through measuring those parameters. I'm going to explain more afterwards why we can do that. For the people that know a little bit something about cycle tracking, you will ask yourself, why, well, is it just temperature? Why, what's about the basal body temperature? I've heard that before. When you look at the green line, that's progesterone. Progesterone is usually driving temperature. So temperature only increases after the fertile window and not before. I know this is all quite technical, but it's important to understand that in order to understand our technology. But to go a bit away from um, the technical part, I'd love you to meet Shannon. I gave up trying for a couple months and we actually found out that we were pregnant. And at our three month ultrasound was when we found out that the baby no longer had a heartbeat. I remember I called up a girlfriend and I was crying to her about just everything, the loss and, and wanting so much to become a mother and wanting to get pregnant again. And she mentioned to me, oh, have you heard about this Ava bracelet? I think Ava helped me conceive because it helped me to learn more about my body. It, it told me the best few days for when we we needed to try and, and you know, just seeing that, that peak ovulation and, and knowing that this is accurate. I feel that if you're more in tune with your body, if you know what's going on with your body, you have a better chance of knowing when's the best time to try and conceive. Shannon's story is just one of many now. Um, and on a, on a more positive note, Shannon's little one is now one of over 20,000 babies that our users announced to us since we started this company. We see around 50 pregnancies a day um, being added to that. Thank you. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about the company, and then I'll tell you more about AI in general for healthcare. Ava is now, we're around 120 people by now. We started in 2014. We have five offices now all around the world. So we're really excited to bring this technology to you know, the entire world at this point. Um, what I want to talk about a little bit is how are we using machine learning and AI in medicine overall at this point? Because I do believe that we're at this very strong, um, really, parting point where we're going to start seeing AI coming into healthcare in various places. And we already do that. I'm going to run through those examples a little bit, but we see the use of AI very strongly in medical imaging. That's a place where we've seen it for a while. Lyme disease detection actually came up. Cardiovascular, um, we have different areas of influenza where we are already using AI and sleep apnea. Those are just a couple of examples of where AI already plays a role within healthcare. Um, one of the interesting facts around that is all of those, what the big advantage that we have um, compared to a lot of those other areas in, in healthcare is that you need a lot of data. And by definition, when you're in women's health, Women have menstrual cycles every single month. So we are, we, are actually, we are actually combining much more data than if you have to look for one data point with, let's say, Lyme disease. So that helps us to really apply AI to this area. And one of the biggest outcomes for us um, is actually our clinical paper that we've just published um, a couple of weeks ago. And what you're looking at here is basically how our technology works. So what you're seeing here is how all of those parameters that I mentioned before, skin temperature, resting pulse rate, 
heart rate variability, perfusion and breathing rate, how all of those are changing throughout the menstrual cycle. So the green shaded lines, or the green shaded background is what we've been looking at before. It's the fertile window. And this gives you a really good idea of why, by measuring all of those parameters, we can really detect the fertile window in real time. And for all of you who are not in women's health, I want to stress that this is really unprecedented insight. We don't know a lot about the menstrual cycle at all, and now we are finally starting to understand it. So we don't only use that insight to basically validate and explain our technology, we really believe that it broadens the absolute scientific understanding of menstrual cycles, which is really, really needed overall. This whole approach of bringing AI to women's health doesn't only stop there, and I mentioned that at the beginning. We have multiple ongoing trials and also planned trials where we're using that technology to advance women's health care. Um, so be it really from pregnancy to contraception and then also obviously to fertility and hopefully one day menopause. And I do want to end where I started, which is really in why we're doing this. And why I'm doing this is before when I was in the speaker's lounge, I met two soon-to-be fathers who conceived their child with Ava. And that's really why I'm in this. But I think the big picture of it is women's health needs innovation. We need more players to come to this field and start to innovate. Um, and if any of you thinks about starting a company, why don't you do it in women's health? We definitely need it.